So thank you guys all for tuning in. Again, we're going to be talking about growing your business with social media. So going through the different types of platforms out there and figuring out which ones would probably be best suited for your time, effort, and business. Just because we have so many platforms out there doesn't necessarily mean that maybe we should be on all of them at once or all of them right now or maybe all of them ever. And so that's what we kind of want to take you through and kind of realize what you're getting into with each of the platforms. But then also kind of talking about some of the different strategy around these platforms, looking at them and seeing, okay, how can I actually apply to this? If I'm going to do these types of platforms, what type of strategy should I know? What type of things should I just know in general about them? So you can kind of see the list there. We've got quite a long list of social media platforms we're going to be talking about here today. And the idea is really to kind of that you can walk away and understand at least one thing about each one of these platforms and either how to apply it to your business business or potentially already apply it to your current strategy that you're dealing with when it comes to social media. And then we'll also be getting into kind of just a little bit of touching on how this is connected to SEO, utilizing the actual platforms, and then basically just touching a little bit on social media advertising, knowing that we actually do have a whole workshop just on social media advertising. So I encourage you guys to check that out if you want to know more about that at the conclusion of the presentation. So the first thing is I just like, just like to start out with to make sure that we're on the same page here is really what is social media. And so what we're talking about is just web-based platforms that people use to connect socially. Very generic term. The other idea to kind of be so generic is also to realize that you know, there are a ton of other platforms out there besides the ones that we're going to be going over here today that obviously can be included in, um, it, it can be classified as social media. But the ones we're going to talk to about today are really the vast majority of users are going to be on those platforms and the vast majority of businesses are going to be utilizing one or more of those kind of platforms. doesn't mean that if you don't see maybe a platform that you're familiar with or maybe even utilize that it's wrong. It's just these are going to be the most popular one and the one we feel to at least that you probably most have the most questions about, maybe the best ROI with them, and how to then kind of apply them. So one of the things that I always kind of like to start with is to understand what your role is when you have a social media account and you're building a social media presence. The whole kind of idea here is to really present yourself as an industry expert. If we go into social media going, hey, I'm just going to, I'm licking my chops and I'm just going to go in it for sales. It's honestly going to fail you if that's your only kind of cause. It's not as direct type of marketing as for instance, you know, SEM and PPC. PC, SEO, email marketing, those are much more direct. These are going to be more kind of thinking about relationship building and you presenting yourself as an industry expert and being a resource to followers and potential other users that could be following you as well. So a lot of times when we're talking about strategy, and this goes to honestly any platform that we're going to talk about today, is we try to give on, we try to get on, excuse me, a little bit of a rhythm of a give, give, ask type of uh, methodology. And what that really is talking about is that for every one type piece of content that we're asking someone to sign up for something, buy something, do something that's really going to benefit us, we should be doing two pieces of content that is then showing them or giving them some type of resource. That could be informational, that could be humor, that could be entertainment. Again, like it doesn't necessarily have to be something, you know, super tangible or anything like that, but maybe it's a article that, you know, again, um, another industry resource that you have, you want to share that. Maybe again, it is a joke, you know what I mean? Like um, around something that's happening now. Again, you want to be something that's not so salesy is really what we're, get, we're getting at when we talk about the give, give, ask. But also it's realizing that obviously we're on these platforms from a business perspective and we want to make sure that we have a business component to it. So we want to make sure that we're also having a clear call to action within there. And, and that's what we're kind of talking about when we talk about the asks, talking about our products, talking about our services. How can our services, our products kind of help you, but we have to do that in a little bit softer way than maybe you're used to when it comes to SEO, SEM, or email marketing. Because here's the real big philosophical difference between those platforms and social media is that on those other platforms like search engines and even email is these, you know, those people are voluntarily either looking for you and are in the mindset to find your products or services or your offerings, 
or for instance, like email marketing, they've already been connected to you. So we already have some type of either a mindset that's working in our favor or a previous connection. When we look at social media, yes, they're voluntary liking our page or potentially kind of growing our following there, but we're also kind of going, you know, we have to understand that they're there for a social reason. You know, again, unlike when someone goes to a search engine, they're actually looking for something in that mindset. On social media, it's a little bit different. They're, you know, again, there to probably have fun, to be entertaining. So we have to realize that and just be cognizant of that as we go about with our digital strategy. So the other thing too, is I always like to kind of tell people is, you know, when we talk about social media, there are really kind of, you know, again, four main benefits to social media. So the thing is, if you go into this only thinking that it's one and you put all your eggs in that basket, meaning all of your content, all of your messaging, all your branding and language is surrounded around that, it most likely isn't gonna be as fruitful for you. So the four main things that we can kind of look at here are going to be, you know, social media is gonna be part benefit to branding is gonna be a part benefit to customer service. We've seen a rise in people, you know, feeling more comfortable either with comments or messages or whatnot, being able to utilize social media than some other, you know, again, normal forms of contact and communication that we may be used to. Also search engine optimization. We'll get into that a little bit there, but you also can get a benefit by having a fruitful social media account with your SEO presence as a whole. And last but not least is ultimately sales, where a lot of times where we think, um, you know, again, where we want to go with social media, but it's just remembering that it's, you know, again, one out of four of really kind of the benefits of social media in general. So again, as we're looking at this list and as we're looking to kind of get into these platforms, this is really important just to realize that these are going to be applicable. These, you know, different kind of bullet points that we're talking about today are really going to be applicable to all of the social media accounts that we're going to talk about, even though that they're very different from each other and thus the reason they exist. So the first one I always like kind of talk about is obviously going to be the biggest one out there and most likely the one where people start with or the one that they're more familiar with. So it's Facebook. So Facebook has about 2.6 billion monthly users. So at least 2.6 billion people log on and do something on Facebook once per month. It is the most popular social media platform out there. As I talked about, it's usually the one, the safest one to start with. And a lot of times, honestly, a very good ROI for a lot of businesses to kind of start with. It's probably the least niche one that we'll kind of get into. Uh, you know, and we'll kind of see some platforms that are mainly more business, that are more social, more different towards different demographics. Facebook's a little bit more kind of all encompassing. Now, obviously, when we're trying to pare down 2.6 billion people, it gets a little tricky, but the average user on a Facebook platform is going to be approximately 25 to 40, is going to be female, newer to technology. And, but what's another, what's also kind of nice though is 65 plus is really seeing a surge here. And so with that, what we're actually seeing is Facebook is the fastest aging demographic platform out there. So what we're seeing now is that average age is rapidly growing. And that's gonna, the, the reason for that is 65 plus year olds are the fastest growing, you know, again, number on Facebook. To be honest with you, Facebook has become very, you know, again, um, very baby boomer kind of centric or very baby boomer kind of growing demographic on there. Now, obviously these are important things to kind of realize. It doesn't mean that millennials or Gen X or even, you know, again, Gen Z isn't on there, but it's realizing that we are losing teenage signups. We are seeing, you know, again, some of that younger demographic move away from Facebook into other platforms. Obviously that's an important strategy for you to kind of align with your business. Now, again, if your business is predominantly older, um, you know, again, individuals and an older demographic, well then absolutely that may play into it. If ours is more obviously younger, that may also influence our decision from there as well. Another thing to know too is two thirds of users use Facebook on a daily basis. So I know I talked about 2.6 billion being a monthly user base, but we actually have 66% of those users actually on Facebook on a daily basis. And every time one of those users actually go onto Facebook, they're spending approximately 20 minutes of time. Why that's obviously important is we have a lot of people, potentially a lot of your demographic on there, spending a lot of time on this platform. So it increases our opportunity to obviously create a relationship with them, engage with them, and be a resource for them. 
So some things to kind of look at when we talk about Facebook on some content that works, how to kind of utilize it and some potential, some negatives towards it are, is this. So the beauty of Facebook is it's pretty much any type of content you want to post, you can do that. That's not going to be the case for all platforms we're going to talk about here today, but it really does work for Facebook. So, you know, again, when we're trying to be a resource, when we're trying to be that industry expert, blogs and articles are a great thing to share on there for a couple of reasons. One is Facebook allows links that are just, you know, hot links, which means once you paste that link, someone can click on it and go to that page. Also, what's kind of nice about this is that this is a great way that if you're creating blogs, you're creating articles, it's fantastic to get people, you know, again, to your site from Facebook. And that's why blogs and articles are a great way. When we talk about that give, give, ask mentality, this is a way that we can give. We're giving people a resource, you know, information to read, information to look more into with blogs and articles. Now, remembering too, is everything that you share on Facebook doesn't necessarily have to be 100% custom or to you. Meaning that if you maybe have a sister company or if you have another you know, person in your industry that's maybe not a competitor and they have some useful information, most likely that is a good you know, again, thing or a good opportunity to share. Because again, we now have opportunities to not only connect with them, but we're giving someone a resource for something maybe we didn't have to create. Another good thing is, you know, visually Facebook is another platform that that is pretty much every platform we're going to talk about today has a visual component, meaning that the more visual we can make our posts, pictures, videos, um, you know, previews when we post links and all of that kind of stuff, usually the more successful they're going to be. You know, a lot of times posts that are just purely text aren't going to be as successful if we accompanied them with a link, with a video, with a picture, et cetera, et cetera. Another really good thing though, to kind of look at though, is updates and questions. People a lot of times go to Facebook first, that if they're looking for kind of the fastest information, it's becoming more and more actual that people will bypass a website for quick and up-to-date information and actually check a Facebook. So for instance, if you're having an event that day, if you're having some type of, um, you know, again, in the moment type of either event or meeting or broadcast or whatnot, whatever it may be, um, emergency even, a lot of times people are utilizing Facebook to kind of go there more than they even would on a website. That doesn't mean though that you shouldn't be posting that on your website or utilizing other social media accounts to actually get that message out there. It's just realizing that updates and questions and things like that can be really good for your Facebook users. It also can start to help in, you know, increase engagement and then drive that engagement up. Engagement is pretty much anytime you put content out there, that's something that they're doing something back. So that may be that they're liking it, loving it, commenting, sharing. Obviously the, the how we can increase that is understanding some of the content pieces that work on that platform, but also just the repetition of actually creating that content and getting out there. One thing I always like to kind of tell people when it comes to social media is it's like fishing. So again, if we, we you know we may want to know the you know the best time to go fishing, what pole to use, what bait to use, and that's obviously going to increase our chances of maybe them going viral. The more people seeing it, engaging with it. But there's one kind of thing to remember too about all of this is that even if you follow the, that criteria, just like in fishing, is I could hypothetically catch a record-setting northern with a Barbie pole and a small worm. It's probably not likely, but I'm saying there's that chance there. And so what I'm saying, you always have that kind of chance, that virality, that luck kind of factor that's in this. But what we're trying to do is if the more we understand, the better we can align ourselves and give ourselves the best opportunity to be able to be successful and to kind of go fishing and catch uh, from there. And that kind of just goes into that conversation kind of piece. Anything that can strike a conversation when it comes to questions, posing different types of things can be useful. So really Facebook is a great way to drive traffic to your site. And so this is great. Obviously we wanna, you know, we wanna engage with users on Facebook. We wanna get their comments and wanna get those things, but especially usually when we have an ask of some sort to say, hey, 
Maybe it's download this tech brief, go you know, purchase this item, schedule a free consultation, things like that. We obviously a lot of times are gonna probably wanna get them into the website. Now you can do some of that obviously with on Facebook, but the key here though is when we can, re when we can get someone off of social media, two things essentially kind of work in our favor. One is that that proves that they're more interested in whatever we are you know, selling or our company is representing. Also, we can then control the environment when we actually get to our website. So again, like, you know, on Facebook, we have to kind of, you know, work in the confinements of Facebook. When we get them to our website, all the user paths and just the website building and everything that goes along with that is now controlled by you. So we've been talking about engaging with users. Absolutely one of the best ways to kind of do that on Facebook is with the content. It's one of the best, you know, again, reasons to be on Facebook is with engaging in content. And also it's a great way to promote events and products because of some of the built-in tools that Facebook has, but also just in general with what Facebook represents. Now, some things just to kind of make sure that you kind of realize that could be conceived as negatives when it's looking at Facebook. So the first is that there's there's more competition. Yes, there's more users, to, so it gives us an opportunity that, to be kind of discovered or to engage with more. But also, you have to remember, you're not always just fighting other competition people in your industry. A lot of times, your competition on social media is that person going to um, you know a football game, that person posting about their dog, the you know again birth announcement, all of those other things that happen in life, which is what really Facebook was intended for, is more competition. So it's just realizing that and kind of what we're getting into. Another really super important one to also remember too is if you want to adequately grow your Facebook account and depending on where you're starting at, you may have to consider kind of the pay to play type of mentality. What we're saying there is that a few years ago, and it's actually several years ago now, is that Facebook essentially they, they essentially downplayed the algorithm or made it harder for businesses and the business posts to actually rank better and to get more and more reach, essentially to get more people to look at it, to like it, to share it. So essentially on average, as you start to build up your Facebook following, a good rule of thumb to know is that for every post that you do, you can essentially probably, you know, again, estimate that it's going to reach approximately four to 12% of your audience. Now, it doesn't mean that that's always going to be the case. Like we said, there's always that factor in there. But on average, if you started to look at those, most likely you're going to see a four to 12% kind of reach, meaning that that's how many people it's going to go to and that's the percentage of your audience. That's why it's important to make sure you're consistently posting. We'll talk about a schedule here later on today. And it's also important to realize that we're doing the give, give, ask. We're having different types of content that are also being, you know, created by you and then posted. But it is realizing that if we do sometimes want to take our social media game to the next level, if we want to get more followers, you know, again, faster, we may have to look at boosting our post, look at promoting our page and things like that on a lower level. Now, you could even start with maybe even 20 bucks a month and you could start building off of that as well. It's just understanding that it is, you know, again, hard to build up a, or I should say, it usually doesn't go fast enough for people when they're building up their online presence presence within social media um, because they want it to go faster. It's, it's much more exciting to have more users. And again, you can do that naturally. And I'm going to show you some free tips on this next slide on how we can kind of do that and some little tips there. But you may want to consider, you know, again, having a boosting or a promotion budget. And last but not least is we, you know, it's not stale to everyone, but, you know, again, with Facebook being the first social media site, with it being one out there the longest, it a lot of times gets the most publicity, positive and negative, that there sometimes is a stale factor that kind of comes along. Sometimes that's related to, you know, again, age demographics as well. You know, a lot of times if grandma, grandpa, mom and dad, aunt, uncle are on a platform, it's most likely not cool for kids and grandkids and nieces and nephews and things like that. So, you know, again, there can be kind of that stale factor as well. But with saying that, I want to show you two really kind of cool uh, tips to really look to kind of increase your following that does not um, take you any money to actually do. These are all free and these are built into Facebook. 
So the one is making sure that you know that you can actually invite friends to like your business page. This doesn't mean that you paste, you know, I mean, you just share your social media page um, and your Facebook page, excuse me, onto your personal account. You can do that. You know, you could create it on your, on my Ben Tice page. I could go, hey guys, like my, you know, school marketing page and tag it. This though is actually going into the page and you can actually physically invite your different, you know, again, all of your friends to actually like your page. It's the number one thing you should do either if you haven't done it or if you're starting a business page. These are free likes sitting out there. Most likely your family and friends are going to want to like your page. You can, again, still post it on your personal one. The problem is usually not enough people see that to make it, you know, again, worth it. And so a couple of things to kind of know is Facebook due to kind of spamming and trying to have some of those policies put in place will limit the number of invites you can send. Now, again, you usually you just kind of keep sending until it tells you, hey, you got to cool it. You got to kind of wait. And so a lot of times, depending on how many friends you have, if it's hundreds or thousands are obviously going to predicate how many you can kind of look in there. But the other thing to also kind of realize, too, with this is that, say, you know, Facebook, you know, you go into your page. And you can kind of see this on the right hand side, you click the three little dots, you have invite friends, you can do this from a mobile device or a desktop, you invite them and maybe it invites 500 of your friends. And it's going to say, hey, you got to stop, you got to cool it. Well, you can try back the next day, every couple of days, every week, and just kind of keep doing that until you've exhausted all of your invites and you've invited all your friends. It's important to know too, you can only invite your friends once. So unfortunately, if you invited them and they didn't see it or something, unfortunately, you know, again, they're not going to, um, you're not going to be able to invite them manually again. The other thing too, is you can also add, ask some of your friends or your connections to invite them to like your page as well. It's something that, you know, again, if you have other admins on your page, if you have other people in the organization, family and friends, they can actually now invite their connections to like your page. So you can see that really on a, you know, for just a couple of clicks here going through this system, you could potentially get dozens or hundreds of likes just like that. You could obviously really, really help yourself if you're just starting your account, or even if you have hundreds or thousands of followers, why would we not want to get more? The other thing and how we can kind of get more followers too is um, after you post and you start engaging with users, obviously people are going to like, they're going to love, they're going to react, care, wow, sad face, you know, angry face to all your posts or they have the opportunity to. Well, once that kind of happens, you can actually go through those different posts. And if you click the number that's next to the reactions to show you how many likes you got for that post, you'll get a little screen that pops up just like at the bottom of here. And you can actually see people that aren't liking your page and you can then manually invite them. A lot of times this happens because either maybe friends didn't know to like your page and we have that or friends of friends or connections of connections actually see some of this content and then are looking to react to it. So again, you can now use both of these types of methods to actually increase your following free of charge. Now, unfortunately, not, not all of these are going to work across all social media platforms. You know, Facebook has these two that are really nicely built in there. And yes, it is a little tedious. Yes, it does take some, you know, work and some um, you know, again, remembering to do it. But really, when you look at it, you know, again, here's a great opportunity to really keep on and grow your presence over the coming days, weeks, and months ahead by inviting, having others invite, and then finally inviting people that are engaging with your posts that don't already like your page. So hopefully that can kind of give you guys there. And if you're guys all watching this, you guys could even just go do that right now. Like I said, you can do it on your phone. You can do it on your desktop. And I hope that you guys all by, you know, again, tomorrow, if you guys did that, are having dozens or potentially even hundreds of new followers. So the next platform is going to be Instagram. So Instagram has a little over a billion monthly users. So, you know, again, about, you know, or a little less than half of what Facebook has, but a huge amount. Over the past couple of years, Instagram has been the fastest growing uh, social media platform out there. They've got one that's actually taken uh, first place now, which we'll get into later. But it, for the past couple of years, it has actually been the fastest growing social media platform. You can see here that the average user is now going to look a little bit different than Facebook. We're going to see an 18 to 24 year old. We're going to see still fem female 
dominated, but now tech savvy. And so we're, you know, you can kind of get an idea that we're talking about kind of millennials, we're talking about Gen Z, we're usually talking about a little bit more of a younger demographic that is going to be on Instagram. Now, just like Facebook, it's very similar um, usage is that 60% of users use on a daily basis. So now we also have a, you know, again, a large user base of over a billion and 60% of them are on the platform on a daily basis. This obviously, again, is very good news for someone that's looking to utilize Instagram. Now, some of the things to kind of look at too, the content to post. Now this gets a little bit different than Facebook. Everything on Instagram has to be visual, essentially without links. And I'll get into that in a second. And what we're talking about here is Instagram is not a very good platform to start saying, hey, here's a link to my blog, check it out, or go check out this link. It's very much more visual. And because like the platform is maybe a little bit cleaner, it, you know, again, it limits some of the content pieces that you can put out there, but it's a little bit more unified and uniform kind of across the board. So really, when we look at Instagram, we have to be looking at um, doing visual content. So that can be images, that can be videos, and we also have different places that we can put these. So we can do a live, you know, again, Instagram TV, we can go live on Instagram. We can just put it static, which we're used, we're used to kind of seeing, which is more or less just your Instagram page, or you can even do a story. So Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, a lot of these platforms have kind of a story feature, which essentially are going to be a visual kind of post that you're doing that's only going to last for 24 hours. So some of that is going to be a little bit more engaging and things like that and how we kind of do that. But the idea is that it's all visual content. And so with Instagram, we can post them, you know, most likely you're going to be posting them from a static perspective. That's the one that, again, is just like posting on a Facebook page. It's going to kind of keep there and the history is going to build but we could also look to potentially go live. We could potentially look to have a story. So you know, when we have a post on Instagram, another thing to remember is that Instagram is very hashtag centric. Now there are a lot of the other platforms we're gonna talk about today, including Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, they utilize, you know, again, hashtags, but I will say the number one platform that definitely utilizes hashtags and to make sure you have that integrated into your strategy is going to be Instagram. So a couple things to kind of remember, you know, a hashtag is essentially just tagging your post with, you know, some type of descriptive term. Sometimes it can be funny, sometimes it can be long, sometimes it can be short, but you're essentially just tagging your post with some type of descriptive tag via a hashtag. The thing to kind of remember and to kind of have some of that strategy is that I always recommend for every Instagram post, you should try and strive to have approximately five to 10 hashtags. The reason for this is that it increases your discoverability factor. A lot of times how people are going to find you on Instagram and how people are going to grow their Instagram following is by having these hashtags attached to posts that people are going to click on from other posts that they're seeing that are potentially related. So hypothetically, if we post a, you know, again, a picture about a dog, you know, again, we could obviously look to, you know, again, hashtag it with hashtag dog, hashtag dogs of Instagram. We could, you know, again, go into different ones. Well, when other people are seeing other posts that are, you know, with hashtag dog, a lot of Instagram users will click on those and find other, you know, again, posts because of it. Also, Instagram also essentially kind of tracks your usage. And if you keep liking a post that has hashtag dogs on it, most likely you're going to be suggested by Instagram to say, hey, have you seen these other profiles or these other posts that also have that hashtag dogs in it? So from a business perspective, now again, if our business is dealing with dogs, great, but from a business perspective, we can kind of apply that to whatever our business essentially serves. So really it's an idea that, you know, between, you know, hashtagging your posts with five to 10 kind of descriptive tags to them, it increases our chance of A, Instagram understanding what our, prof our profile is about, and then B, having other people discover us either with being suggested by Instagram or manually actually searching for it. And when it comes to hashtags, you can really do whatever you want. Whatever you think, what, you know, again, how you would describe or tag a post, do that. And you can even experiment with it a little bit. And you, you know, obviously the more specific you go, the less competition for that hashtag is gonna be there.
but probably less, you know, again, likely that it's going to be searched or found. So you can kind of balance some of those as well. Another really good one that works with Instagram are products or events. Just again, something that's very visual that we can kind of see potentially run ads on or tag. But again, something that's going to be visual that we can do a picture or a video about. We can't necessarily just paste a link to our blog and put that in there. It has to be accompanied with much more than that. So how do you be able to utilize Instagram? You know, selling visual products or services are a great way, or even just kind of, you know, again, showing people kind of your portfolio. So, you know, the landscapers, the, you know, again, the artists, you know, whatever your business is, if we've got a visual component to it, obviously we can display our, uh, you know, again, our different work and our gallery, so to speak. We also can gain exposure via the different types of hashtags. We can also start to build a younger following. A lot of times people are going to Instagram because potentially they want to start connecting with Gen Z. They want to start connecting with millennials or even maybe they currently are now and they know that that demographic is on Instagram and they want to make sure that's you know associated with their brand, that that's associated with who they want to connect with. That's really going to be where we can kind of utilize um, Instagram and how we can kind of go further with that. Now, a couple things to know with Instagram that are definitely going to be different than a lot of the platforms we're going to talk about today, and especially different than Facebook, if you're really familiar with that, are these. So first is it's essentially phone based. Um, and so with that is that, you know, you can't, you know, go onto a desktop like you can on Facebook and do a post. You have to be able to kind of do it via natively, you know, Instagram via the app. So downloading the app on your iPhone, downloading the app on your Android and being able to actually log in and post from there. Also, there are some platforms out there, like when it comes to Hootsuite and a couple other ones, that you can do some type of kind of posting on Instagram, but it does get a little tricky when you're using a third-party application. Um, again, third-party application, which we'll talk about here later, are things like Hootsuite, Social Sprout, things like that that kind of help you boost and, uh, or excuse me, post a bunch of your different types of content to multiple platforms at the same time. It does sometimes get a little tricky there and you sometimes have some restrictions whereas the other platforms a lot of times that we're talking about don't have as many restrictions on that. And then last but not least, which is probably the biggest thing that frustrates people on um, Instagram and the thing to get used to is, and I've kind of alluded to it, is we can't have links on our post without paying for it. So like on Facebook where I can say, hey guys, check out my new blog. And I put kind of a link, it even gives me, it pops up a preview of it. It pulls in a picture from my website and I can do that and someone could click on that. It's not the way that it works on Instagram. On Instagram, you essentially get one, you know, again, bio or profile link that's going to sit on your main, like, you know, school marketing Instagram account. So really what you have to do is sometimes be strategic there where, you know, you, you would see the language or you use the language of, okay, hey, to find out more, use, you know, again, the link in my bio, use my profile link, use my bio link. Essentially, you're sending people back to your profile to then click on a link. And sometimes it can be a little frustrating or getting used to it because we're used to on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Facebook saying, hey, check this out, here's the link. Unfortunately, that's not the way it is on Instagram. We kind of have to send them away to kind of our profile and then kind of link from there. And a lot of that goes with Instagram's strategy of keeping it clean and their idea of that's what that does. Now, again, you could decide to run some ads and you could look to actually, you know, again, then pay to have that link in there. But if we're talking about organic posts and we're talking about doing it just, you know, again, on a regular basis, we have to get in the model of utilizing that profile or bio link and then sending people that way. Okay, so moving on to Twitter. So Twitter is about 325 million monthly users. So the average user is going to be about 18 to 29, female and good with technology. 40% of users actually use it on a, on a mobile device, and that has definitely been increasing. Um, and really, so when it comes to Twitter, is you used to only have 140 characters to actually post something. So that, and a character meant every space, punctuation, or letter. Now you have double that at 280 characters. But still, that's going to be less than all the other, other platforms out there because you really aren't capped on a bunch of the other ones or into an extreme level of characters. But so the other th thing is we have to remember that we have to do kind of quick bites when it comes to Twitter. So, you know, things that work really well on Twitter are tips, 
facts and quotes, things that are very easy to digest, very easy to fit within that, you know, 280 characters or less, and something that's just going to kind of show up, you know, and then very easy to kind of engage with. Also, another really popular thing on, you know, Twitter are retweets. So retweets are simply going to be, I like your tweet that you did on your profile. I click the retweet button. It actually takes your branding and your tweet and puts it onto my profile. Now, obviously you can share posts and everything on Facebook, on LinkedIn, but Twitter makes it the easiest to do it. And it's probably the most beneficial on Twitter. Um, a lot of times when you start to retweet, when you start to like or love other tweets out there, that's how also you can get found by other users on Twitter. That's how you can increase your following on Twitter by retweeting others, by following others, by really kind of essentially engaging with others. Um, also, another really good way that Twitter is, is kind of a customer spotlight, really kind of quick and simple, you know, again, shouting out some of your customers or doing things like that. Again, they're going to be kind of short tidbits of that. You could still post your blogs, you can still post, you know, kind of whatever, just knowing that we are, you know, again, limited by those characters. Another way that I really love to kind of tell people to use Twitter too, is, you know, as you're trying to establish yourself as an industry expert, you can also be looking at, you know, again, other people in your industry to kind of help you aggregate that information. Because here's what I always kind of tell people is, you know, people that start following you on social media don't necessarily expect that you're creating all this content. They're coming to you because, again, you're establish establishing yourself as an industry expert. Being an industry expert doesn't mean always that you're creating the content. It means that maybe you're curating it, vetting it, and then serving it out to users. So there's a value in being able to, again, curate, vet, and then distribute. Well, that can be really, you know, helpful, and Twitter can be a really easy way to do that. There are things kind of called lists that you can put people in and you can put other industry experts that maybe you look up to into those and you could potentially start to, like I'll give you an example. I on our um, Twitter account have an SEO kind of industry experts list. So I put a bunch of people that I look up to in the industry of SEO into that list. Well, sometimes when I'm looking like, hey, I wanna post something about SEO, I'll go to that list and see some of those other companies and actually, you know, again, take one of their pieces of content and then share that. Again, our users that are following us, again, aren't expecting that I'm producing all of this content, but I aggregated and vetted that content that I put these people in a list and now I'm sharing that with our users. So we can also look to, you know, again, interact and get to know followers and customers better. A lot of times people will come to, you know, again, Twitter, Facebook, and other ones to actually engage with people. Um, sometimes complain, sometimes, you know, again, reach out um, because they're more familiar with it. But it is important to realize that that, you know, aspect is there and to kind of look. So some of the negatives though, is a lot of tweets, you know, again, this is probably one of those platforms where you're kind of expected to be engaged um, with users on a higher frequency or a little bit higher basis. Like I said, uh, you know, one of the things where you can get a lot of followers is by retweeting others, by liking others, by commenting, by following. It just usually takes a little bit more engagement or a little bit more engagement is expected on Twitter than some of the other platforms. And just sometimes it's important just to realize now this a lot of times happens to big businesses, but a lot of PR explosions can happen on Twitter or just realizing that I'm sure we've seen celebrities, I'm sure we've seen other people, you know, again, tweet and kind of do stuff and kind of get, uh, put their foot in their mouth, so to speak. You see a lot of that kind of on Twitter and you see that viral kind of ask kind of, you know, spread happen a lot on Twitter. That's not to scare you away from it. It's just to be cognizant of kind of what happens on Twitter. Um, you know, again, Twitter can be a very passionate group and with with, you know, again, passion comes good and can sometimes come bad. And so it's just kind of realizing there, but Twitter is great again for a company like, you know, potentially yourself to look to kind of follow other companies to build a following and to kind of do those quick type of bites of information that we can kind of get out. If we're going to do heavy bites or heavy sales, that's the thing too, is Twitter users and the algorithm and the platform really, it, it's very hard to a lot of times sell on Twitter. Doesn't mean it can't be done. Doesn't mean other people are successful at it. But if you start to compare the success rate, or if you do exactly the same things on Twitter as you do on other social media platforms, most likely you're going to most likely have a better conversion rate or, you know, again, uh, just, you know, conversion rate just in in general um, on those other platforms than potentially Twitter. 
Now getting into LinkedIn, this is actually my favorite social media platform because it's great because it's all revolving around business. Whereas like we kind of talked about, we have to, you know, a lot of the other platforms you talked about the give, give, ask. doesn't mean that we shill, still shouldn't do the give, give, ask on LinkedIn, but we can get away with asking a little bit because a lot of times when we're asking or we're talking about our business, that's really what LinkedIn is meant for. You know, on the other platforms, we got to be careful about talking about ourselves too much. And again, you still have to watch that on LinkedIn, but it's important to realize that obviously this is a business platform. So when people go on to LinkedIn, they have a business mindset already there. Whereas on Facebook and some of the other ones, a lot of times they're most likely going on to Facebook, going on to Twitter, Instagram with a social kind of mindset on, and then we need to kind of engage them from a business perspective. When it comes to the average users, it's, it's important to realize that you can kind of see this is the first platform we're talking about that's actually male dominated. We have about the average users about 40 to 45 and newer to technology. A lot of times we're dealing with older business professionals that are utilizing LinkedIn to obviously connect, to cement them, their, their selves as an industry expert, to connect with other industry experts and potentially clients and users alike. Also, it's really nice that most users on LinkedIn are based in the US. That's a lot of times I'd say probably 90 some percent of our demographics here that are listening to this are probably US based. So again, where we talked about some of those big numbers on some of the other platforms, it's important to realize that those are global numbers. And so this is a nice thing to kind of pare down and know that this is going to be more of a local from a US perspective. So the content to post, as I kind of alluded alluded to it just previously, is that you know very business orientated type of information. So case studies, infographics, videos, facts, statistics, blogs, all of those types of things. Yes, you know some of those we're going to post on other platforms, but we're really going to look to kind of you know again really hone in on the business perspective of these on LinkedIn. Now it's important to realize that on LinkedIn, more than any other platform, it's kind of a unique premise that just like I could have a Ben Tice, which I do Facebook page, but then I also have a school marketing business page. Well, the same thing is for LinkedIn. We, I have a Ben Tice LinkedIn page, but I also have a school marketing business page. And so the unique thing though, is on every other social media platform is a lot of times your personal uh, profile is obviously more about you and personal. Yeah, you might talk a little bit about your business, but it's mainly there for personal use. And then your business one is there for business use. The unique thing about LinkedIn is that you have two different types of platforms or excuse me, profiles in a business and a personal that are really trying to exemplify the same business or trying to do the same things. We're just connecting with users in a, in a different way. So the reason I say this is that on LinkedIn, you should have a strategy for both, you, both your personal profile and your business page. Now, honestly, you could probably start out with having the same amount of content or the same content being between them to kind of build them up. But eventually, it's nice to even sometimes have different strategies with them or understand that the personal one, obviously, you're, you know, again, connecting with people with a face to it. And we're connecting with people in a different way than we are for instance, on a business page, which is more like your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram business profile, which is just connecting to people in a different way. And I'll get into how we can kind of grow that here in the difference here in just a second. But I do want to make sure that we understand that distinction, but also realizing that more than any other platform here, you know, all the other platforms that we're talking about are going to be, you know, again, we're talking about from a business profile perspective. So we talked about Facebook, we were talking about it from a Facebook business page. Twitter, we're talking about it from a business Twitter account. LinkedIn is you're gonna have both. You're gonna have the Ben Tice, you know, business profile as well as the Skull Marketing LinkedIn business page as well. So how we can kind of utilize LinkedIn is that we can look to identify key referral partners, you know, looking up and engaging with different groups. You can kind of see that there is finding different other industry experts. This is another way, you know, we talked about it on LinkedIn or excuse me on Twitter, but you can also utilize LinkedIn as a way to kind of join some groups and find some other industry experts and ask them questions about issues you're having, connect with them just generally, find some content they're doing and that would maybe be useful to your demographic or you're following and then kind of post that. 
And also realizing that your personal account a lot of times is going to be kind of a virtual resume. Now, that doesn't mean that a resume and that you're always looking for a job, but a lot of times it's making sure that a lot of that kind of the expertise, what you do for your current job or if your current business, if you own it, and all of that kind of stuff is clearly laid out so that people can see the longevity that you've owned your business, the different skill sets that you, you know, again, um, you know, bring to it. I always say that when you have a LinkedIn page, one of the first things you could do, you should do on your personal profile is, you know, LinkedIn has like a little wizard, they call it, where they're just saying, hey, make sure you fill out your title. Make sure you have a profile picture. Make sure you fill in this, this, and this. The more you can fill out on LinkedIn, the better it's going to be for you. Filling out your about section, filling out your title, filling out your accomplishments, your jobs, all of that type of stuff. It's making sure that when we talk about virtual resume, we're not necessarily talking about always looking for a job maybe you are sometimes, but realistically, you know, from a business perspective, from a business ownership standpoint, we're less kind of talking and showing people our skill set. Again, cementing yourself as an industry expert, you know, being able to show all the different things that you've done in your career that would yield benefit to potentially someone hiring you or even someone just connecting with you. Now, some of the negatives are, um, you know, again, with LinkedIn are that sometimes it is a little confusing between the personal and the business page. But like I said, it, at the beginning, start out with just posting the same content you do to your personal, then you do your business until you kind of get your feet wet. And then you could potentially look to have a different strategy for both. But even at the beginning, just look to kind of get those kind of settled. You want to make sure that you do have a LinkedIn business page, that you do have a LinkedIn profile page. You want to make sure that you have both and you're utilizing both. Also, sometimes navigation can be a trick because LinkedIn's, you know, sometimes does a lot of U, um, AB user testing. So you just got to kind of watch out for that and kind of look at that. And sometimes that can be frustrating, but it's really, they're just trying to improve the platform, uh, you know, again, consistently. One thing I do want to show you, though, is, um, you know, again, very similar to what we talked about with Facebook is LinkedIn also has a method where you can actually invite connections to like your LinkedIn business page. Now, the, the, the difference here, though, is like I said, like LinkedIn or excuse me, Facebook, you can most likely invite hundreds a day or, you know, they have they have different parameters. LinkedIn's going to be a little bit more restrictive. So essentially what you get is for your business page on LinkedIn in general, you get a hundred invites every month. The first of the month, they give you a hundred credits. So a lot of times actually what I have on my uh, Google calendar as a reminder is the first of every month, I know that LinkedIn is renewing my credits. So I go onto my LinkedIn business page and I actually look to invite my connections that have not yet liked my business page and I fill out and I click a hundred of them and I send the invites. Well, what's kind of nice is yes, the next month I'll get a hundred more, but the important piece to remember is in between those months is that anytime that someone accepts your invite, you get one credit back. So about every, you know, again, week or so, I will then also check to see how many credits I got back. So for instance, if I go and I invite a hundred people next Monday to like school marketing and by Friday, 20 of them liked the business page. Well, then now I got 20 credits back and now I can invite 20 more. Eventually you'll do it where you'll have no credits remaining. You'll have to wait for the next month. But this is a fantastic way that not a lot of people realize sometimes that you can, you know, again, you're getting free invites to have people like your LinkedIn business page. So make sure that you take advantage of this. And this is going to be done right in the admin tools. You can kind of see the bottom right screenshot here and the admin tools on your LinkedIn business page. And it's simply called invite connections. And from there, you'll get the other pop-up that you see right here to the left of that. You'll simply kind of click, click, click them and then you'll send them and then obviously monitor it. So for some of those credits that you do get back. The next platform is not quite a full social media platform, but it still is important to kind of talk about. And that is Google My Business. So Google My Business, this essentially came out of, if you guys are familiar with Google Plus. So Google Plus was Facebook's attempt at essentially Facebook. It failed and um, in 2019, it was deprecated by Google. But what they did do though, is they took the social concept of you know, Facebook, of Google, what Google Plus was, and they put that, you know, that feature that you could actually do posts 
and they morphed it into Google My Business. So for those of you guys that maybe don't realize, so Google My Business is just the little red pins on the map. That's like, you know, when we click the red pin on the Google Maps, we get a little profile of Skull Marketing or the bakery shop down the road or the auto repair shop, whatever it may be. And so, but on those platforms, you can actually create content that are essentially little, you know, they're called Google posts and essentially like social media posts. And you can essentially associate those with your Google My Business account. So really what this does is this actually allows your Google My Business account to, you know, to actually be better within Google's eyes. You can increase your ranking and obviously you can also increase your exposure to potentially some of the things that you want to post about. Now, some of the stuff to kind of post isn't necessarily usually, you know, so much blogging and things like that. It's going to be more or less kind of what we would do probably more on Instagram. It's a little bit more visual, but we do have links. We do have, you know, again, different descriptions. So for instance, events, um, photos, photos, photos. It's, you have to have a photo that is connected to one of these. You can also now though do videos. So if you have a video that you want to post, you can also do that as well. So the idea though, is it has to be visual and maybe you just have some of your general social posts and maybe you just your general announcements. Um, maybe you're having a sale come up. Maybe you're trying to, you know, you can list your products. You can look to, you know, again, list a special or a coupon. So again, it, it's, it's more social-esque, but there is a social component to it, but it's on an already established Google platform of Google My Business. So again, this one's going to be a little bit different than some of our other platforms that we're talking about, um, but it is really important to kind of look at and utilize. Um, it can also help you show up on the knowledge graph, which is pretty much when you do a Google search, the right-hand sidebar, you, you know, they actually will show up there, the, the different posts in the Google posts. Um, they'll show up on Google Maps. It's again, it's another area where we can have more distribution or be discovered. You're, you know, one of the things that I a lot of times preach to people when it comes to social media is reuse content. You're already kind of creating this content. It doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, the same exact post verbatim is going to, you know, that you're going to post on Twitter than you are on Instagram or LinkedIn. But the idea is the same message can be or a modified version of it. Make sure you're taking advantage of if you're going through this and you are actually creating this content, make sure that you're reusing it as much as possible. And just, you know, some of the things just to kind of look at is, you know, again, reviews can be both positive and negative, but the one biggest thing to remember too, though, is that Google My Business is for your local customers, whereas your other social media sites and your website in general are for your global customers. So if you do have like just a purely e-commerce, um, you know, again, Google My Business probably isn't going to be right for you, but you also don't just need to have a physical brick and mortar store. You can be on Google My Business with a, a with an address either at your home or whatnot, and pretty much then it's just a service area. And so again, Google My Business is a really powerful tool and going to have a lot of impact on SEO, but can also have an impact on, you know, that social-esque feature of Google Posts. Moving along here, and again, I know we're kind of in the middle of talking about all these platforms. I know there's a lot to kind of take in, so I want to appreciate you guys staying with me here. But, you know, when we move on to Pinterest is that, you know, the average user, about 25 to 34, female, tech savvy. The thing with Pinterest is over 50% of people on there have uh, children. So a lot of times it's kind of the mom platform. That doesn't mean that all people obviously on it are women or moms, but it is a very, you know, again, closely connected kind of a mom platform. But really, you know, again, what where Pinterest though is getting rid of kind of the mom kind of stereotype there and the niche kind of factor that that brings is Pinterest can be really useful for a lot of industries. It works very well for visual businesses. Like for instance, you know, again, landscapers or really any business that might be visual. You know, again, school marketing has a lot of visual components to it as well. You know, you can make any business, you know, for Pinterest work. How Pinterest essentially works is that when you post something, it's essentially called a pin. And then they, then you essentially do collections of those pins called boards. 
Your goal then is to create more and more pins so that people actually take that pin and put it onto one of their boards. Like I'll give you an example. One that you see a lot of times are wedding boards. So someone might say, okay, hey, I'm me as a user, I'm going to create a dress board, a wedding dress board. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to search for, you know, on Pinterest for all these different types of wedding dresses on different profiles. And then I'm going to pin them to my board. So your, you know, again, goal here is to have people kind of grabbing your pins and putting them within your boards. So, you know, again, anything visual is obviously going to help. Checklists or like infographics can be a really useful things as well. Samples of work, um, you know, again, all of those things that are going to be visual that people could essentially pin and you could be discovered is going to be a benefit. We can utilize this to drive people, you know, drive traffic to our site. We can have links within Pinterest. We can increase email subscribers. We've had a lot of success with working with people on Pinterest where, you know, again, we can kind of develop a email campaign. Doesn't mean, you know, obviously you should probably have an email campaign for every social media platform out there, but we know Pinterest is, you know, again, a great way to kind of do that as well. Also, because it's very visual in some of the advertising opportunities that Pinterest has, we can also sell products very well on Pinterest too. So some of the negatives though to kind of look at with Pinterest though is it, it does end up sometimes being a little niche for some businesses. Maybe it's not gonna yield the best ROI or our business isn't as visual as we would like or as Pinterest would potentially kind of like. doesn't mean that, you know, again, your business can't be on Pinterest. It's just understanding that we're, you know, we're creating these boards, everything is visual and we need people to kind of pin that. We have to have kind of a strategic um, strategy kind of behind it in order to make that successful. Okay, so final two here. So the second to last one we're gonna talk about is Snapchat. So the unique things about Snapchat are that it is a very different type of demographic. So you can kind of see 13 to 24, we're really looking at it from a Gen Z type of standpoint or potentially even younger as we get into the next generation after that. Um, and you know, we get into the future. But really the one thing to kind of know about with Snapchat is that it's kind of a half um, communication platform and half social media platform. So it is a little bit unique in that kind of realm. Whereas, you know, uh, you know, uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram have a communication component to it, have like a messaging kind of component to it, but they're really not, you know, meant just purely for communication. You can absolutely use them, but Snapchat in it is going to be a half communication, half social media. So the content to post on Snapchat is going to be, you know, again, your different snaps, you know, again, your videos, your images um, that a lot of times you are going to then put on your story or you're going to send to actual individuals. This is again, where that communication kind of uh, platform or style comes from is, you know, when I'm on Snapchat, I take, you know, again, I do a snap. And I can either then put it onto my story, which means that it's going to last there for 24 hours and my different followers have the opportunity to see it, or I have to individually send that to different, um, you know, again, my connections. You can see that that's definitely very different than, for instance, you know, Facebook and Twitter, where, yes, we're sending it to our users, but there's much more of a reach that we can get on the other platforms. With Snapchat, we really have to kind of communicate to people that were on Snapchat and start to have them follow us. And so a a lot of times your following on Snapchat is going to happen off site or off platform or offline by telling them that you're, you know, there. Whereas again, some of the other platforms are going to have a much higher discoverability factor. But with Snapchat, we can drive brand awareness. We can display our company culture because it's a lot of, that's the one thing with Snapchat too, is it's all in the moment type of activity or uh, content. So you can't just plan to, you know, do a snap. You know, we can, we can actually schedule a post on Facebook. You can't do that on Snapchat. You have to do it from your device in the moment, you know, again, for that. Um, so, you know, really when we start to look at this, I'll be honest, a lot of businesses end up finding and we're probably not the, the most recommended platform out there for small businesses. Now we have some businesses that have been able to utilize Snapchat like event driven type of businesses. And again, doesn't mean that you can't try it or you can't do it for your business. But a lot of times when you're looking at the effort that it takes to put in, that you can't schedule out posts, that you have to do it from your phone in real time. And then that again, you're putting it on your story and people are going to uh, follow you, you know, again, from that, 
it is going to be, um, you know, again, usually it's not going to yield the best results, you know, again, from an ROI standpoint of the effort that you're going to be putting into it. Um, so, but again, it's still one of those things to kind of, you know, again, check out and one of those things to, you know, again, potentially kind of experiment with, but I would say, I'd say most of us on here are probably going to be better off served by focusing on one of the other platforms than Snapchat. And that leads us last but not least, and probably the newest one out there and absolutely the fastest growing social media platform out there is TikTok. And so TikTok has about 800 million plus, you know, again, daily active users. So again, this is a daily, on a daily basis, getting close to a billion users. You can see that the average users, you know, again, you know, going to skew, young, skew younger at 16 to 34, about 60% female and very tech savvy. And so there is about more than 2 billion downloads worldwide of the actual app. But obviously, you know, we have a very engaged type of um, demographic here. Really, TikTok is all about videos. So this is creating videos either live or editing them and kind of, you know, putting either music behind them, doing, you know, again, fun and exciting things behind the scenes with your business. But it's all revolved around video. And so obviously that's a great thing to kind of be able to engage with, but it's also important to realize what you're getting yourself into because, you know, from a business perspective, you know, video just holds a lot more. There's a lot more prep. There's a lot more execution that goes into video. But absolutely, TikTok can be valuable to businesses because, again, you have 60 seconds, up to 60 seconds that you can show people. Obviously, you can cement yourself as industry experts in 60 seconds. You can give people resources in 60 seconds. You can entertain people in 60 seconds. And that's really what we're looking for is interactive and fun content. Um, you know, again, it is kind of, you know, again, definitely going viral and a lot of, you know, again, TikToks have gone viral, you know, again, from there. So we can look to, you know, again, drive more brand awareness. We can look to have some things obviously be more call to action. But the one thing with TikTok is, again, it's much more visual. And the idea is that we're digesting it on that platform. It's not really meant for, and we don't really, you know, again, we can't really link easily to a website. So we can't just, you know, very similar to Snapchat, where Whereas it's got to be on that platform. And that's why there's a lot of branding that is the benefit to TikTok. And a lot of influencers are on TikTok because that's a lot of times what they're building is just their brand. Now, from a business perspective, doesn't mean that we shouldn't maybe look at uh, TikTok. It's just understanding what's going to go into that. And a lot of times, a lot of resources go into videos. A lot of time, a lot of creativity, a lot of energy, a lot of times is going to go into those. We can't, for instance, we can't schedule out on TikTok either, just like on Snapchat. So it's got to be a lot of that type of, now we could do, you know, make a video other where, uh, and then kind of bring it onto TikTok, but we can't necessarily kind of schedule that. So if you are going to look at TikTok, the thing is just be prepared to be really creative. Honestly, have some fun with it and, you know, start creating these, you know, again, videos to do it, but knowing that it's going to be definitely different than a lot of the other platforms that we're talking about when we talk about Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, that are much more scheduled posts out, go out for business, and you kind of control, you know, getting people to your website a lot more than, for instance, TikTok. Um, it's still very new. Um, and, you know, may, and that's obviously both positive and negative, but it might be something for you to kind of try because again, with the video stuff, you can look to, you know, um, cement yourself as an industry expert. Okay, so as we're looking at this, one thing to kind of look at too, and this is not to scale, but this is just to kind of give you an idea of where they kind of rank on here from more of a business oriented platform down to a completely social media or social esque kind of platform on the etiquette, the tone, the kind of just the you know, expected use of it, you can kind of see what we're looking at here. And so LinkedIn by far is going to be the most kind of professional LinkedIn and Google My Business, as well as then on the opposite end, Snapchat and TikTok are going to be more of your social ones. You can kind of see that there's a parallel there that, you know, as we get to be more social, it's usually the ones that are going to be harder to get off of our site to sell something to and to do those types of things. Whereas the ones more on the business orientated side, a lot of times we can communicate to them in a different way. And we most likely could have a better opportunity to, again, get them off the platform, get them to the next thing, you know, whatever our call to action may be.
So one of the things too is to make sure is to find your voice. Find what social media platform best fits your business. I know we talked about a bunch of them today, but making sure that we don't spread ourselves too thin. The worst thing you can do is to sign up for all of these and you get overwhelmed and you stop posting. It not only takes away from your brand, it takes away from your, the effort, the effect that it has on, you know, again, all of within the algorithms, everything like that. So if you want, you know, again, to know some of these expectations is that to get on a schedule and post regularly. So at a minimum, we should at least be trying to create two to three posts per week. And ideally, like, and ideally means that if at all possible, and you know, what a lot of these platforms want to see is five to seven times then per week. So we're creating multiple, you know, again, pieces of content every week. If you are expecting to go on to social media and succeed by posting once every week or every two weeks. I, again, I, I'm sorry to tell you that unfortunately it's going to fail you. We need to be having more consistent content than just a kind of a, you know, for instance, you know, one a week or so. So again, if it is just starting with two a week and then kind of growing, you know, again, growing up from there, then do that. Set, set yourself a reminder on Tuesdays and Thursdays to do some piece of content. And then let's, let's move into three times a week, then four, then potentially five. And we can experiment with different types of content. If it's video, if it's links, if it's pictures, if it's reviews, all these different types of pieces of content that we can start doing. Also, I encourage you to kind of check out some third-party applications. I know I kind of alluded to them previously, but these could uh, potentially really help you out with your strategy. So these third-party applications allow you to actually have an account, like for instance, with Hootsuite, and you log into your Hootsuite account, and you would connect all of your other social channels that are applicable and they're allowed. And then you could actually just run it from there. So instead of having to log on to Facebook, then log on to uh uh, LinkedIn, then log into Twitter, you can do that all from one platform. So I encourage you to kind of check it out, you know, Hootsuite, Buddy Media, Buffer, find which one best fits you um, within pricing, within, you know, again, just features and look to potentially utilize one of these third-party platforms to really help you schedule out content, distribute content, you know, again, just post content just in general. It can be a lot easier and a lot um, not as intimidating than feeling that you need to log into every single one of these platforms platforms. I also know that I alluded to this at the beginning and a couple of times out there too, is, you know, one of the forgotten benefits about social media is uh, search engine optimization. And so what we're saying is that when we talk about, you know, again, Google having relationships with these different social media platforms is being on those social media platforms can essentially benefit our website because it, again, we're, we're giving Google more things to index. We're communicating to Google more with content of what we post, who we are, who we're connecting with and everything like that. And we're showing them the effort of creating content. So the top four platforms for SEO are going to be Google Posts on Google My Business. We talked about that previously. Facebook, your business page, and then, and then your Twitter account. Those two are going to be very beneficial because Google can actually, again, index your Facebook business posts as well as any of your tweets on your Twitter account. And then last but not least is going to be Pinterest. Any images that pop up um, that you essentially put on Pinterest can actually be found in Google Images. So it's just important to realize that you actually have an added benefit that you may not have known about when it comes to social media, when it comes, you know, again, looking at SEO. And then last but not least, and again, reminding you that we have a whole presentation just on this, but it is important to realize um, that, you know, again, there are different styles and systems, but you can essentially advertise on almost all the platforms we talked about here today. So Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat, you can look to find advertising opportunities if you want to accelerate your growth or potentially target a very specific demographic. Um, one thing I always like to kind of mention here too is that you want to make sure you understand the difference between PPC pay-per-click and boosting and sponsoring because some of them have different types of models and there's sometimes, you know, again, you have to kind of understand the difference between them. So PPC is going to be that you're essentially paying when someone engages or actually clicks or does something on the ad. So you're essentially, you know, the distribution of that ad is for free and then you're paying for the actual results. 
Whereas the other way is the opposite. You're actually paying for the distribution and whatever happens on the ad, if it's, you know, again, really small or really large, you're paying the same price. And, and honestly, some of these are going to have different benefits for each other. And some of the, some of these, there's only one allowed on different platforms. So you'll have to kind of experiment with them. And also with different demographics, with different call to actions, your different users, all of those are going to play a part into which advertising opportunity you may look at, but just knowing that there are the different ones there. So with that said, is again, I know we covered a ton of information. I appreciate you guys bearing with me here. I do want to open it up to any questions that you guys may have and kind of take those from here. So Anthony, do we have any questions? Uh, we do have about three to five uh, lined up and great job, obviously. A lot of information there. And I just want to remind everybody, um, Ben mentioned a lot about video and he's going to do, be doing a workshop in two weeks about video and YouTube. So sign up and for that. Okay, question number one. Hi, is there a way to link your LinkedIn personal profile to your business page or are they two separate entities? Well, so there are two separate entities in that, you know, so you have to have a personal, you know, again, profile that would very similar, like a Facebook page that would then manage your business one, but there's no way to like post content on both of them at the same time, unless you used one of those third party applications. So if you used a Hootsuite, you could actually connect your personal profile and your business one to it and then distribute content there, but you can't do it from LinkedIn to both. Okay. How many new personal connection requests per month in LinkedIn? A hundred, same as business page. So yeah, so sorry. So to clarify that, yeah. So it, it, the the hundred, you know, again, credits are only for your, you know, again, LinkedIn business page. Your profile, you can keep requesting people to connect with you. This is only for your LinkedIn business page that the hundred is every single month. Very similar to, again, your Facebook business page. Again, we can invite other personal connections to like our page. It's the same concept for LinkedIn, but we only get 100 per month. Okay. Are you able to get rid of the Google Maps from your company Google search? My company address is a PO box location. So does that not represent a professional, a professional image? And I am not physically at this address. Um, yeah, so you would want to change that. Um, it is very difficult to just kind of remove. You can't just go in there and say, Google, remove my local listing, but there are some things out there. I encourage you to maybe reach out to me afterwards because that's kind of a subsect of it. So the, the short answer is yes, you can, but the longer answer probably be there's, there's probably a better way than just trying to remove it. Um, that would probably be more beneficial to you. Okay, uh, someone also will respond back to that. Um, I will acknowledge it. Uh, Google My Business will not let you register your business with a PO box. You will have to use your home address to receive a verification code by snail mail. Then you Correct. can delete the address and just have the service area selected. Correct, but some of them still will, sometimes you can sneak them through and they still will show up as a PO box. And that's what I'm saying is it's a lot of times gonna be a longer answer to that then. Okay, thanks for the clarification. How does YouTube help SEO? Oh yeah, YouTube is a fantastic way for SEO. We'll actually talk about this at length in our video workshop. But um, so Google is, or excuse me, YouTube is owned by Google and YouTube is actually the second largest search engine in the world. So absolutely, if you really want to hit SEO hard, you obviously, you know, again, we have a whole other presentation on SEO, but one of the things that I can tell you is that video and YouTube should absolutely be a part of your strategy. Okay, now we have about uh, five great jobs, Ben, and thanks for all the information. Great workshop and so forth. Perfect. Well, again, I want to thank you guys there. If you guys have any other, you know, final questions, please get them in here. But I did just want to say, you know, again, thank you guys for tuning in. And I appreciate you guys, um, you know, again, you know, joining us today. And hopefully you guys are, have learned something and took something away. So with that said, as I do want to say that as a reminder, we will be sending out this, you know, again, this uh, recorded presentation as well as the PDF slides. But I also want to say that if you do guys, if you guys have more questions, please reach out. You see my contact information on the screen. Feel free just to reach out if you have a question. You know, that's what we're here for. Where, you know, I always joke that we're not going to be a lawyer and we're not going to be, you know, having the stop clock to kind of get you. We're here to kind of help and to answer those questions. And with that said, another way that we like to give back is we also do free consultations. And so it's one of those things where it's not a sales pitch. If you want to talk about our services, awesome. would love to do that. 
but this is meant for, you know, again, I know we covered a ton in a short period of time. I know I have to be somewhat kind of, you know, again, broad because we, you know, we have a ton of different users that are here. If you wanted to say, hey, Ben, can you look at my Facebook page and tell me, you know, did I set this up correctly? Hey, Ben, so specifically, here's my business. Should I be on Instagram, and if you wanna, you know, again, talk a little bit more one-on-one -on -one and in-depth, feel free to take us up on that offer. Again, it's completely no obligation um, there. We just know that sometimes it's like drinking from a fire hose. Sometimes we need a little bit more help um, beyond some of these workshops, and we absolutely love to offer that. All you have to do is just email us for one of those free consultations, and really it's your time to ask any questions to get some help on stuff that we can look to kind of do. And with that said, as I also want to just encourage you guys to check out our other workshops that we offer at schoolmarketing.com slash workshops. Um, again, I know Anthony mentioned the video one we have coming up. We have a bunch of different other categories um, and topics coming up in the, in the next several months. So I really encourage you guys to do that. So if there are no other questions, again, I want to say thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, ben, I want to get one more in here if you can so a lot of people sure. can hear it. Uh, how about Rumble? Um, yeah, so again, like I said, some of those other, there are, there are definitely other platforms out there. I'm just going to say that again, focus on these ones from your business. You may have an opportunity to reach, you know, again, like there are probably dozen, another dozen that I could create a presentation on, but the likelihood that you're going to get the same ROI than some of these other platforms is just, you know, again, is going to be mitigated. Great. Thank you, Ben. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for tuning in and you guys have a great day. School.